My presentation is called, Why We Need a Functional Water Treatment Plant. This presentation is about the global need for wastewater treatment. It starts at the global level and goes to the local level. I am sending this presentation and a document called Talking Points that has references to everything I talk about here and more to everyone on our club email list. If you are not on the email list, contact me separately. I was a guide in the Grand Canyon in my 20s. I wanted to stay associated with that group, so I started Jack's Plastic Welling to make recreational products for river runners. After a couple of years, it became a full-time job. We needed to make different things to stay in business. The Chinese are brutal competitors, which forced us to make all kinds of things. After 35 years, we have a good reputation of building things to solve complicated problems. I have a web page of the, of the things that we are most proud of making, including included in the Talking Points document. We started making products for environmental studies and to save marine life. This is an inflatable litter to rescue manatees. This is a floating tank to quantify ocean acidification and coral growth. With that tank, a scientific study was conducted by mixing up a basic solution and then spreading it on a section of the Great Barrier Reef. Coral growth was monitored over time. The study proved that if the ocean had the same pH level as it did in 1900, corals could grow 12% faster than they do today. The coral kindergarten is a way to hybridize corals faster by combining the sperm and eggs from the same species with different genetic codes. This allows corals to naturally find the best survivors for the changing conditions of the ocean due to climate change. For example, studies have shown that the majority of branching corals around Florida have been reproducing by cloning themselves for 2,000 years. This means that they all have the same genetic code and are subject to the same climate change issues and the same diseases. There are only about 3% of those left around Florida since the mid-1990s. If they all have the same gene code, their eggs and sperm will not fertilize to form new larvae. With the coral kindergarten, it is possible to have all 200,000 or so of the larvae in the tank with different genetic codes. For this reason, it will be possible to grow corals that are more resistant to disease and climate change in a natural way that accelerates natural selection. This is coral sexual reproduction. I am here today to talk about the most important problem humans face. It is not COVID, it's climate change. Climate change threatens our oceans in ways that everyone needs to be concerned with. Oceans are the lungs of our planet. More than 50% of the Earth's oxygen comes from the ocean. One billion people rely on coral reefs for food or for a job. 25% of all fish species live in coral reefs that occupy 1% of the ocean. Coral reefs are the first ecosystem facing total collapse. What happens when it collapses? We can't be certain, but we can be certain that it will make it harder for humans to live on this planet. The six hottest years on Earth have been the last six years. That plus 1.25 degrees centigrade number is important. Keep that in mind. This is what has been happening with climate change in the past century. The World Health Organization assessment, taking into account only a subset of the possible health impacts and assuming continued economic growth and health progress, the World Health Organization concluded that climate change is expected to cause approximately 250,000 additional deaths per year between 2030 and 2050. However, the real canary in the coal mine, both for the nuclear testing from the United States 
but also from climate change, is the Marshall Islands. This documentary is an important story to watch. I'm not proud of some of the things that my country has done, and I'm not proud of what my country is doing right now with climate change. I am proud that I can exercise my First Amendment rights and say what is wrong with my country and try to fix it. If the USA caused this problem, we should be fixing this problem. Remember that 1.25 line? We only have 0.25 to go before these four countries are under the ocean. Humans need coral reefs. We have already talked about some of the benefits of a healthy reef. Here are some more. A healthy reef can produce 5 to 15 tons of fish products per square kilometer each year. A coral reef adds more than $375 billion of benefits to humanity every year, and we get that for free. And then there's tourism. The point is, we, if we can make money flow in the right direction, then our community will want to have a clean bay, and that will allow us to grow corals. Coral reefs are struggling, and the main culprit is global warming. Other threats are overfishing, ocean acidification, and pollution from sewage and from plastic waste. By now, we have all heard news about corals bleaching because the ocean is getting too hot. Perhaps an even bigger problem is that our oceans are getting more acidic. Calcium carbonate, the main component of coral skeletons, shellfish, and limestone itself, cannot exist in an acid environment. The ocean has absorbed 25% or more of the CO2 we produce. This makes carbolic acid. Back to today's main topic. Corals on Coral Island are having difficulty staying alive because of this kind of pollution. People have become sick with cholera swimming near Sayulita. Proper sewage treatment should be a worldwide commitment, but it has to start at a local level. When there is pollution and overfishing, algae growth keeps coral larvae from settling and growing. When the reefs are overfished, species that normally eat algae are missing from the ecosystem. There are three basic theories on saving corals. When used together, they can be very effective. Microfragmentation in coral gardening, selective and enhanced breeding of corals, and the coral kindergarten and coral sexual reproduction enhancement. These three ideas may save our reefs, but not if we do not fix climate change and clean up our oceans. What is microfragmentation? Corals are cut into little pieces to stimulate rapid growth, 50 times the rate of normal growth. The corals can grow in one year what may take 25 years normally. Because of the accelerated growth, they will start to reproduce earlier than normal too. Microfragmentation works on all Caribbean species with enhanced genetic strains and is the preferred method with coral gardeners. Sperm and eggs are introduced into the tank of the coral kindergarten and they fertilize naturally. Crates of cement substrates are introduced for the baby, corals, baby coral larva to settle on. The tetrahedron substrate will land upright when tossed overboard from a boat with baby corals attached. The biofilm, the colors along the sides, are where the coral larvas like to settle and grow. Biofilm can take up to two months to accumulate in the ocean before they are put in the kindergarten tank. So it is possible to use these various techniques to restore reefs both locally with microfragmentation and coral gardening and on a broad scale with the coral kindergarten. But where have we already been seen a success? Laughing Bird Key is one example of a place where human intervention has brought the reef back. In June of 2018, the Great Barrier Reef of Belize was taken off of the UNESCO endangered list because the people of Belize know how valuable the largest barrier reef in the Caribbean is. 
for Mario Castro and his family, the fishing was not very good at the southern tip of the Baja, so the locals decided to make their area no fishing zone to improve the corals and the fish populations. Mario needed a new livelihood, and so he decided to open a dive shop. It was hard for about the first 10 years, but now corals and fish life is fantastic, and business is better than ever, and there's a healthy ocean. Here is one of the large Mexican marine reserves. It's located near the border of Baja California, Norte and Sur, where locals have more control over this environment. This is an even larger marine sanctuary that consists of 50,000 square miles and is a no fishing zone. It is 200 miles off the coast of Nayarit. It is important because colder water from the north mixes with warmer water from the south and sea life is abundant. Our, we our western Mexico coast has an opportunity to take advantage of this. When the ocean is cleaned of sewage discharge, a natural spillover of marine life will happen, and that will be good for everyone, but especially the tourist industry. However, a dirty bay is not attractive to marine life. This could have been the future of the Mexican coast. However, our efforts are bringing more recycled plastic into the system, and our bay and roads are much cleaner than years past. New technologies are being developed to recycle plastics, and soon plastics will be able to be recycled indefinitely. I am proud to be part of an organization that knows how serious this is. I personally support the Ocean Cleanup and the Interceptor program. I have more about these ideas in the Talking Points document. What can the Haltemba Bay Rotary Club do? We can enlist the support of someone who understands the problem and bring people together. Zaida would be a good choice. Local officials and stakeholders are not as likely to listen to a gringo like me who didn't grow up here and has difficulty with the language. Other ideas are youth education programs and marine biology mentor programs like the highly successful sea turtle program. When we have a functioning sewer system, we can foster a whole new tourist industry based around a healthy bay. And on top of that list is coral gardening. There are places that will teach coral gardening in the Caribbean and in Fiji. It will only take a couple of years at the most. With successful coral gardens, we need to promote the ecological miracle to bring more tourists and more jobs. Everyone should clean up our local space and reduce our personal carbon footprint. This is good for business, the environment, and the future health of our part of the world. I would like everyone to watch this TED Talk by Austin Bowden Kirby. He has a program to teach coral gardening in Fiji. It is my hope that someday we will have a local person who is on their way to learn about coral gardening. Bringing back the, our corals is a future worth pursuing. It is an election year in the USA. Please vote for the ocean. When it is your country's turn, please vote for the ocean. We need our best minds out there solving these problems. Science deniers and climate change deniers have no place in our government. Our children, our grandchildren, and the lungs of our planet are counting on us. Thank you.